is the key to the great revival. Every day, like a drawing person, try to gasp air. So I'm trying to gasp through prayer to receive more anointing from the Lord. Because uh, to meet the challenge of every day of my ministry, I need a tremendous amount of anointing, peace of God, wisdom of God, understanding of God, and knowledge of God, might and discerning of God. And to receive that kind of God's peace, joy, might, I should pray. Without prayer, I can't get that kind of anointing from the Lord. So I am desperate every day. I'm a desperate person. If I don't pray, I can't carry out my work because I'm constantly under tremendous pressure and stress that my heart would be stirred up and I would lose the peace. And then I would not have the joy and might and strength to carry out the work of the Lord. People are asking me a question, what kind of pressure do you have? <laughs> well, every day I should take care of 75,000, 750,000 members of our church. My main auditorium seat, 12,000 people. And then we have 20 satellite church. And each church has 5,000 to 10,000 members and I'm preaching to them simultaneously with main auditorium congregation through satellite in Orovich. And also we made a sovereign church of another 15 satellite churches, which has 10,000 to 100,000 members. And I chopped off the church and the congregation to my associate and sent them out to take charge of the church. So we are actually carrying out the service through mostly television, through satellites. So we hook up to the satellite in orbit, and through that we preach to the 20 satellite churches and 160 branch churches flung out throughout Korea, then to churches in Japan. And we also have 300 prayer houses. All the people and invalid people could not come to the church. So we made 300 prayer houses near to these people. And from 50 to 300 people are in prayer houses, having a simultaneous service through this satellite television. And area that we have internet church we have internet broadcasting station, and most of the young couple are staying home watching the internet having the service because uh, we have a uh, parking space only for 5,000 cars. So more than that, we can't accommodate. So young people with children have a very hard time to find a parking place. They stay home, and they have service through our internet system. And uh, after seeing the internet and having the service, then they send the tithe and offering by click, click, click. So we see all tithe and offering through clicking. And the think of that, I have no way to visit my home, Christian's home and counsel with them and pray for them. Many people are having home trouble, children's trouble, business trouble, and sick. And they all want to have my personal contact but I can't. So I found a way. Every morning I come to my office and I stay for two hours before internet. And they send messages through internet and I answer back through the internet. And through internet I pray, through internet I consult, and through internet I preach to them. So we have wonderful fellowship and home visitation through internet. And God has given in this age a wonderful instrument to use 
for the propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So practically, nowadays, I don't visit any home. Of course, I have no time to do that. But internet, through internet, every morning for two hours, I carry out all home visitation, all the consultation. And I pray through internet for the sick people. And then added that I have a great pressure to oversee the prayer mountain. I call it prayer town. We have a big prayer town. Main auditorium seats, 7,000 people. Then added that we have dormitories and dining facilities and everything. Every day, more than 3,000 people are up there fasting and praying. And so I should oversee those set up. Then added that we have a big social work. We have technical college for underprivileged young people, those derelict young people. And we get them on the street, and the police station send them, men and women. And we clean them up, and we put them in dormitory, and we give them a technical education free of charge. So we are teaching them automobile repair, computer programming, architectural drawing, hairdressing, cooking, everything. And then when they graduate from our technical college, they become fine young men and women, good Christian, and they would go out and become a wonderful citizen. And that is also a burden and pressure for me, raising the fund to feed them, to close them, to educate them. Then we also operate the senior citizens' home and also house for the senile dementia. So many people are senile nowadays around the world. And people are keeping them up on the street. So we gather together and we wash them, take care of them till they go to heaven. And to do that, I should raise also a lot of money. And also, we are operating our daily Christian newspaper, which has half a million circulation every day. And it is no easy to publish newspaper daily. Because uh, president calls us, Congressman calls us and business people calls us and ask us to add this article, ask us to withdraw that article. A lot of pressure comes from every part of society. But we are standing on Christian standard and we don't compromise. So it's a wonderful Christian witness through a daily newspaper. And we are publishing the largest and the best Christian magazines and also weekly church newspaper. And earlier that, we are operating Hansei University. My wife is in charge of that, with 3,000 students, and the Bethesda Christian University together. And I tell you, the budget is enormous, so I should try to raise a fund to relieve my wife of the headache. <laughs> and then we have churches in abroad. We have 400 churches in USA. Actually, I've studied 600 churches in America among the Americans, and 200 of them become rebellious and left me a few years ago. <laughs> but still, I take care of 400 American churches here in the USA, and we have more than 100 churches in Europe, 50 churches in Japan, then we have churches in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia, New Zealand, and the countries of Africa, all over the world. And since I've dispatched 600 missions around the world, constantly they are sending the message, asking me to send more money for the work. <laughs> so I'm trembling when I receive the letters from missions. Always they ask me to buy the vehicle for them, buy some home for them, and send more money for the education and so forth and so on. So tremendous pressure. Area that we have a one beautiful university in Chinkent, Kazakhstan. It's an Islam country. But we built a beautiful Christian university. 
by the mistake of government, they issued the, uh, the license for Christian church to come and start Christian university. <laughs> and many Islam from the Saudi America, Africa, no, Saudi Arabia, and the Middle East are coming there to receive education. So they enriched in our school for computer programming and technical teachings and so forth and so on. And naturally, when they finish their course, they become Christian. So we <laughs> praise the Lord. Yeah. And we are publishing an enormous materials, publishing house for the materials for Sunday school and cell leaders. We have almost 50,000 cell leaders, and they are wonderful people. They are just common lay men and women, and well-trained. And they open their home, and they gather together five person, and they have service every week. And this five cell will become a district cell. So they make their own home, spiritual home, through the cell meeting. They call each other's first name, and they have a real intimate fellowship. Because when they come to church, they are just one number in vast crowd. They feel lonely, uncared. But when they go to cell, they call each other by first name, and they are taken care of. So cell ministry is very, very wonderful. Without cell ministry, I don't think I could have taken care of all of these numbers of Christians. So there, we are publishing a lot of the know-how books to the uh, cell leaders. Then we have various educational systems for the church members, school for the young people, school for the newly married, school for the husbands, school for the wives, and school for the older people. We have various grades of school, and we're constantly educating the people. And to do that, we have an institution of the full gospel study with about 20 PhD scholars, and they are fully in charge of this education. And more than anything else, full gospel businessmen's fellowship. Wonderful, wonderful fellowship. One of uh, the head leader, Kim Sunbe, is among us here. He's going to lecture after me, I guess. 50,000 business people, and most of them are millionaires. Beautiful, wonderful. And you know, all of them are serving God through mission. We have American mission, European mission, China mission, Southeast Asia mission, Islam mission, and African mission, mission for the entertainer, mission for the scholars, mission for the uh, police, mission for the school teachers, mission for the bankers. We have vast missions, and all of these businesses are belonging to each mission, and they pray for them, they witness to them, and they, they receive offering from them. So that's wonderful. You know, Gospel, Gospel Business and Fellowship is enormous organization, and we love that. Then we have non-government operation, good people. Through this non-government operation, good people, we are helping so many people in Africa, we are sending tons, thousands tons of cloth, food, medicine to Africa, Asia, and North Korea. So far in North Korea, three million people have starved to death. And this year, five million children are dying from tuberculosis because of malnutrition. You think of the leader who will not take care of their people. This uh, prime minister of the North Korea is only thinking of the militarized country. He's spending all the money to develop the missiles and the atomic bomb. He is nonchalant about the death of his people. There are no human rights, no any freedom to move around, especially it's terrible for the older people and younger children. They need a traveling license to, to move from this town to another town. Young people are moving around at night to get the food. But these older people and the children, they cannot move around. So they just sit down there and starve to death. 
And so through our NGO, good people, we struggle to send clothes, food, medicine. This year, we are scrambling to send $10 million amount of the medicine for tuberculosis. <laughs> then beautiful organization we have is CGI, Church Growth International. Through Church Growth International, every year we are inviting thousands of ministers around the world to come to South Korea to share the church growth secrets, principles. And through this, we have developed a tremendous circle of the friendship among the successful pastors. So, since I should carry on all of this work, I need a special anointing and mind of peace, might, and wisdom. And where do I get all of those things? On my knee. Usually, I would pray for five hours every day. I would wait upon the Lord. Nowadays, I become a little lazy, and my knee is painful, so I would kneel down and pray for three hours. But actually, every moment, I'm spending my days in the mood of the prayer, constantly asking God to anoint me, constantly fight against the hindrance of devil. And through God's anointing, I can carry out this work. And God showed me the way how to pray. Many people ask me question, how could you pray for five hours? What do you say? <laughs> through the CGI conference, when I invite so many American, European pastors, I would take them to prayer mountain. And I bring them to a prayer room and close the door and they say, you can't move out of this door before you pray one hour. So, so let's start. And about five or ten minutes, American or European pastors, they pray fervently. But after that, they sit around and just only say, hallelujah, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> because they have not learned the technique of prayer. In prayer, you need technique. You see the soldier, when they enlist in a boot camp, they learn the technique how to fight. Soldier can't become soldier without receiving training. So in prayer, you need training and you need to learn technique. So God has helped me to develop many, many techniques. I say that uh, prayer jogging course, 30 minutes prayer jogging course, one hour prayer jogging course, two to three, then marathon prayer jogging course. You can pray all night. But still, you would have many things to speak. People, they just become, they run out of the language or they become tedious, so they can't keep on praying. <laughs> so that the she may take care of everything. <laughs> and uh, I pray God to impart more ability, strength and health. Then my children, then my parents, then my brothers and sisters, then my elders and deacons. You know, I have 1,400 elders and 50,000 deacons. So you can imagine what a headache I have every day. <laughs> then churches, missionaries, and then Korea, then America. Every day I'm praying for Mr. Bush and America. Because in our generation in Korea, we are what we are because of America. Because I experienced the Korean War, I, I, uh, I was grown up during that period. But for America, we would have been dissipated a long time ago. Because communists came and played havoc on our country. And America came and delivered us from the communism and from starvation, and from poverty. So in our generation, 50 years old beyond, all thank America every day. We appreciate you so much. And the only way to compensate is praying for America. 
But I, my heart is broken seeing our young generation, these young guys, they have an empty skull and they don't know too much anything. So uh, they demonstrate and they do all of these ugly things. And I was so angry in my heart. Right away, I gathered together our Christian. I went out to City Plaza. I had a big campaign, 70,000, second time 100,000, the third time 200,000. And we, we was waving the Korean and American flag and we prayed for Mr. Bush and we, we love America and all of those things. So I think we must pray for our leaders and for our government. And I feel such a keen spirit to you, you America, American people. I take it as a responsibility in my life to pray for the leaders of America and American people through the rest of my life. Then American church and my wonderful friend, like Brother Wendell, he's a wonderful friend of mine, member board, and Brother Pringle from Australia. He's a great man of God. This young man, I think he will do far greater work than we do. And God is going to use them so mightily. So, brothers and sisters, I'm always praying every day through the tabernacle prayer. When I go through the tabernacle, then I feel such a fulfilled feeling in my heart. I feel the satisfaction. I see the smiling face of God. I become so strengthened in my faith. And I move out and I become equipped to meet the challenge of that day. And I hope that you would also practice this tabernacle prayer in your life. Then you not wander around in your prayer life, groping for the words and always watching the, your watch. And you say, oh, I prayed quite long. Oh, only five minutes. Oh, my. <laughs> because you have not learned the technique of how to pray. But if you make a jogging through this tabernacle prayer, then you will forget the time. At least, it will take more than 30 minutes. It's a great thing to pray more than 30 minutes. You will feel tremendous anointing by having a, such a fellowship. Then one hour, three hours. And I ask my Christian to pray every day for one hour, and my minister at least three hours. Because when Christ was praying in the Olive Mountain, then his disciples were in the sleep. Jesus said, can't you be awake for one hour and pray with me? Pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Then he repeated it three times. That means that Jesus prayed for three hours in Mount Olive at that day, Gethsemane. So I asked my disciples all to pray three hours every day. And that works. God's anointing flow like a mighty river through our disciples, through our church. My dear brothers and sisters, may God bless you very richly. God bless you. Thank you.